So, um, so earlier, do we talk about distance here? Oh gosh. Um, so characters, um, the title of this slide says characters of the input that are important, which referring to this. Um, and um, the first point is, um, is really um, what um, Sebastian asked about. Um, it's the proximity or density measures that separates um, one algorithm from another. Um, you will see that um, for proximity, proximity measures, our euro distance measures um, works very well. We could use Euclidean distance, um, Manhattan, um, causing similarity. Um, for density-based measures, there, there, there are a whole set of um, uh, um, measures that actually defines the density that we're going to look at next week. Um, so those are going to give you a different result. Uh, as we see earlier, the density-based um, algorithms can um, give you separate um, dense clusters from um, uh, potentially noise or um, uh, random data points. Um, and then the data type uh, certainly um, uh, uh, make a difference, as we also uh, already talked about this. Uh, we can't really apply Euclidean distance on uh, categorical data. So on different data types, we might we need to apply different distance measures. Um, dimensionality, I think I, may, I sort of um, hinted on. Um, and in um, weeks before we look at the, the chorus of dimensionality, um, and dimensionality is a problem when we have high dimensional data and when we use distance measures. Um, if you still recall some of the diagrams that we presented in that class, we, we said when the dimensionality um, approaches infinity, so you have infinite number of dimensionalities, the distance no longer make any difference. Every data point is going to be same, equally distant, distant from any other data points. So in those situations that we need um, other measurements that's not affected by the distance. So I um, suggested earlier cosine the angle that formed by the two vectors um, that represents the two data points can be used as a measure. We're going to look at those at the very end of the semester when we talk about um, uh, outlier detection. Uh, lots of concepts that we're going to cover in outlier detection overlaps with the idea that we studied this week on cluster analysis. Um, so dimensionality, um, special relationships in the data um, is also a concern. Um, so um, sometimes you have correlated data um, we talked about correlated data. Um, when the data two attributes are very highly correlated, like one can directly predict the other, um, including those in your, your, in your analysis, simply um, adds the weight to this attribute. Because those two attributes basically give you exactly the same information, right? So, in your distance measures, you basically double the weight for this attribute. This may or may not be what you want. If it, is, if it is not what you want, you should eliminate those highly correlated attributes. Um, on the other hand, um, you could have data sets that um, attributes that has a level of correlation, that the correlation really is what you want to form the cluster. Um, then there's other distance measures that actually use correlation as a distance measure um, so that you can plug in your uh, correlation-based distance measure for k-means or a number of other um, uh, clustering algorithms to allow the correlation to be actually um, vis um, uh, exposed and, and, and uh, um, um, to in the clustering result. Sorry, could you repeat that one more time of when you have correlated data, then mm -hmm. how do you take care of it if you don't want it to be counted the weight too high? Oh, if you have really highly correlated attributes, like um, um, your, your monthly income predicts your annual income, for example, you should just 
do correlation analysis and eliminate the one of the two attributes. Mm -hmm. You do not want them to be there. Yeah. Um, the distribution of the data obviously is very important. If the data does not form clusters, any clustering algorithm will give you a cluster. This is a very important point. Even if your data does not have clusters, run any cluster algorithm on the data will provide you, will the result going to be a clustering? That's, that's why we need to do lots of um, um, pre-processing work to see whether the data actually forms cluster um, and before we actually um, conduct cluster analysis. And the distribution of the data is, can also be used to, to, um, um, to derive clusterings from the data. Um, I think we're going to at least to see one or two examples um, in these two weeks of discussion. Um, noise and outliers, um, because we don't have gold standards, right? Noise and outliers um, are really um, the one type of a big headache for clustering algorithms. Um, some algorithms are more sensitive than others to noise and outliers. When we go through those um, clustering algorithms, we're going to point it out. For example, k-means um, are very sensitive to noise and outliers. Um, so if we don't have a gold standard, then how can we measure the quality of clustering? Um, the quality of the clustering is measured based on um, the tightness of the clusters. Um, so we have um, dissimilarity or similarity metrics. Um, we use different um, distance functions um, for categorical ordinal ratio um, um, variables. Um, and we can actually, um, in some of the algorithms, it allows you to assign different weight to different variables. I think we also saw, see this um, in um, well, we probably did not demonstrate this in class for you, but if you read through some of the menus for some classification algorithms, you should already see this. Um, so um, the quality of clustering is, is, is measured, can be technically measured or objectively measured based on the tightness of the clusters that's formed. But whether this um, clustering result is good for your application, it's a highly subjective um, decision. Um, we're going to look at um, those objective quality measures that, that measure a goodness of a cluster, which basically see tightness and the separateness um, of the um, clusters. Um, requirements and challenges um, for um, uh, clustering algorithms. One is scalability. Um, um, we want algorithms that can cluster all the data instead of only on samples. This is in the context of um, data mining where you have a lot of data. Um, you, you, you want efficient algorithm that does um, categorize and clustering um, the whole data, but a lot of times you can't do that. You have to rely on samples. We're going to look at some of the um, uh, uh, algorithm that does actually make, um, try to avoid using sample. Uh, it does actually gather all the information from the data instead of rely on the sample. We're gonna talk about this next week. Um, um, we want algorithms to have the ability to deal with different type of attributes. Uh, we have, we know all those um, already, different types. Um, um, today we're going to see that k-means can only deal with numerical data, um, but um, PAM um, use um, chemoids, um, metoids, and that can use mixed data type. Um, they're also constraint-based clustering. Um, Constraint-based cl clustering can be considered as semi-supervised um, clustering. Um, we said in general clustering is 
unsupervised at in constraint based clustering, um, the user can specify that I want my final result. In my final result, I want those data points to be in the same cluster. So those are um, constraint based clustering. Um, they're, they're not, um, um, they're, they're still under study. It still remain an open question um, of how to, um, you know, best to make the, the constraints. Um, and we want the result to be interpretable and usable, as I mentioned earlier. Um, the subjective and, um, evaluation of the goodness of the cluster is largely based on the interpretability. If, if you got a set of clusterings, but you, there's no way, if it's very difficult for you to interpret it, it's not useful, it's not helpful. Um, cluster validation is an open challenge. We don't know because we don't have gold standards. Um, others, um, we want to cover cluster with arbitrary type, arbitrary shape, and we're going to look at those. Um, um, ability to deal with noise data. Um, we want to incrementally we want our zone to be able to do incremental clustering. So if I have created um, cluster and I have new data, um, can I just add, have the algorithm to incrementally um, cluster this new data without having to cluster in the entire data set? When you have very large data set, this become a problem. You want to incrementally cluster and not um, having to redo the cluster every time you have a new addition. Um, some algorithms do actually, um, clustering algorithms are sensitive to input orders. So insensitivity to input order of the data observation is going to be uh, one of the requirements as well. Uh, we hope algorithms can deal with high dimensionality um, data. Um, and I think we mentioned the importance of those earlier. Um, major clustering approaches that we're going to uh, look at it, partitioning approach, hierarchical approach, density-based approach, and grid-based approach. So all of these four, we're going to actually spend time and look at uh, in fairly, at certain level of details. So you, you have a fairly good understanding of those. Um, Model-based, if we have time, we're going to look at EM, expectation maximization algorithm. Um, um, frequent pattern based, we're not going to discuss. This is based on the frequent patterns that we have, we learned before, um, association rule mining. Um, user guided or constraint based, um, we mentioned earlier, but we're not going to cover this in this class. Um, link based clustering. Um, you can imagine uh, some of the, uh, you know, um, web, web pages are linked um, to others through link analysis. You can find um, um, uh, clusterings. So there are specific algorithms um, defined for link-based clustering. This is not really general purpose, so we're not going to cover those. 